Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about how many VMs you should be building on a host. We've got VMware ESXi, and you've probably built yourself some VMs already, and you wanna know, well, how many VMs can I build? What about the resources? What about the RAM and the CPU that I've got? How do I allocate all of that? We're gonna talk about that in this video. Before we do get into that, please remember, as always, to subscribe to my channel uh, to get up to date with everything that I'm releasing. Really, really do appreciate it. We have now logged in here to our VMware ESXi environment. Uh, we are running on this particular version, we're running 6.7, uh, I think it is, but you can do this on seven or even on earlier versions. The, pro the process is really exactly the same. Uh, there's not too much difference in terms of the interface. Now, um, if you know a little bit about VMware already from pro you know, possibly watching some of my earlier videos, you know that VMware uh, ESXi is what's called a hypervisor. Essentially, it's an operating system that you download off the internet, off the VMware website, and then it replaces a traditional operating system such as Windows Server or even Linux, Ubuntu or CentOS Server, for example. And uh, it's a VMware operating system that you install, converting a physical computer into what's called a hypervisor. So whether you've got a physical server, a physical desktop, whatever it may be, you can install this hypervisor software onto that and essentially you're now converting that uh, server or that, that desktop into a host. So now it's actually called a host and it's a hypervisor running VMware ESXi. Now the one thing that you need to consider is the resources that are on your physical computer. All right, so of course you are building it from, you're building this, this, um, this ESXi environment on some physical hardware. So you've got a physical computer that has components inside of it. You've got CPU, you've got RAM, you've got hard drive space, you've got all your other peripherals, your graphics and other things as well. When you're configuring your host, you need to be aware of the amount of resources that are on your ESXi host. The more resources you have, the more VMs you can build. The less resources you have, the less VMs you can build. Okay, that's really a summary on the maximum or the minimum amount of VMs that you can build. There's no right answer to the amount of maximum, well, the, the max amount of VMs that you can build or the minimum amount. It's all really dependent on your host. So here's an example. I'm logged into our ESXi host right here and I'm gonna click on host. This gives you a summary on everything that's going on on this particular host. As I said, this is a 6.7. This is running on what's called a Intel NUC, okay? This Intel NUC is a desktop, really, with a small amount of resources, all right? You'll see that right here, it's got uh, your CPU. Capacity here, it says 6.2 gigahertz. Memory, I've got 15.89, or let's say give or take 16 gig. And storage on this particular VM, on this host, is 231, so it's actually got a 250 gig hard drive inside of it. That's what I've got to play with. That is the maximum amount of resources that are available on this host. Now, we'll talk about CPU and memory in a little while, but storage, of course, is dependent on storage that you could also be importing from external sources. So this being a Intel NUC, it's got a physical hard drive inside of it, and I've installed ESXi onto that physical hard drive inside of that host. You've got things such as a NAS or a SAN, for example, or some other storage that you can actually share with this host. So in terms of building VMs and, consider, and I guess you're considering the storage component, it's not as an important question because you can actually allocate additional storage onto this host that is not um, physically on that host, if that makes sense. What we're focusing on here is the CPU and the memory. Now, something that you've got to consider is when you are building a VM, all right, so under the VM section right here, when I'm building a VM, uh, I've got other video, like one of my other videos will cover how to build a VM so you can get a bit of an understanding of what that means. But when you're building a VM, you are allocating resources to that VM. You can allocate how much RAM, how much CPU, how much hard drive and all these other peripherals you want to be allocating to that VM. 
So that VM is going to use a slice of the available physical CPU and RAM that you've got available on your host, okay? And the next VM will do the same. The next VM you build will use a slice of that physical CPU and RAM that you have on that host. Now you ask, but I, I can actually build VMs with a lot more CPU or, and, or a lot more RAM than what I physically got available. Yes, that is true, but the performance will be affected across those VMs and on your host as well. The nice thing about VMware, there's a lot of smart technologies behind it, where even though I've got a whole bunch of VMs, let's say this VM right here, I've allocated, let's just have a look at the settings in here. We just go into edit settings. This particular VM, you'll see that I've allocated two CPUs. So two cores per socket. So I've got one socket, a socket being the physical CPU on that particular host. Um, and it's, well, this is a virtual socket, I should say, but I've got one physical socket on my physical host, okay? And I've said that that one socket should have two cores. Remember, this is all virtual. So building this VM, I've now said to it, I want two cores for each socket that I've got, in this case being one. So from the operating system side, from our Windows side from here, if I go into the settings, the control panel, the system settings on this Windows server, it will appear as if I've got two cores on one socket, okay? Likewise, on our memory, I've got here four gig. So I've actually said this VM will use four gig of memory for it, okay? Four gig of virtual memory in a way, which sort of should correlate to your physical memory to some extent. So when this VM is powered on and it's being used, it's going to require this amount of CPU and this amount of memory, ideally, from my physical host, okay? You go back to my host, here are my resources available. You see that right now, I've got two VMs powered on, DCO1 and VCSA, VCSA being a um, vCenter uh, infrastructure there. So both of these have got allocated RAM and allocated CPU, they're both powered on. You can now see from here how much percentage CPU is being used. Now, they're not being used very heavily right now. If I start using each of these a lot more heavy, I'm actually going in and doing big processes within my DC and within my vCenter, this is going to go up. Well, oh, there we go, it has just gone up a little bit. So it's gonna be using the CPU required for that particular process. The memory, very much similar. Now the memory is a little bit different. The memory is gonna to try to use as, as like for like as possible with your physical host. So you see that I'm actually running very, very low. I'm using 95% of the memory that's on my physical host being allocated to my VMs. Now that's a big introduction to give you uh, a bit of an understanding of where we're going to next. You then ask the question, well, how many VMs, and C like how many VMs can I build on my physical host? It depends on the amount of resources that you've got. My general recommendation is as much as possible, of course it's not always possible, is try to do like for like resources as much as you can. So if you wanna build a VM that has 10 gig of, 10 gig of uh, RAM allocated to it, and another VM that has five gig of RAM allocated to it, your host, I recommend, should have 16 gig of RAM available or more. Don't go get a host that has 10 gig of RAM available. Same deal with your CPU. Try to allocate as much as you can to keep it like for like as much as possible. Because what's gonna happen is if you're building a whole bunch of VMs and you're allocating more CPU and more RAM than is physically available, it may run and it probably will run and you'll be able to power on your VMs and you'll be, wow, oh, this is amazing. I can build 20 VMs on this one laptop that I've got at home those VMs are not gonna run very well. The VMs are likely going to run very, very slow because you're taking a slice of that and that slice is being sliced across 20 VMs and the, the physical host is going, but I don't have that much resources. The good thing about VMware is there's a lot of smart technology behind it where it will still allocate portions of it, but then there's gonna be a lot of stuff in the background called 
CPU weight, CPU ready. There's a lot. There's a lot more te- you know, technology um, ter- terminology. I guess that we're going to talk about in future videos. But essentially, a VM will sit there waiting for resources, and will be able to. Sh- you won't be able to share all the resources unless a particular process has finished first. So this is something that you have to consider. You'll have to build your VMs in accordance as much as possible to the physical resources available in your ESXi host. So the more resources you have on your host, the more VMs you can build. So if you're planning on building 20 VMs, what I'd recommend is before you even consider the host components, think about those VMs, think about how much resources you wanna allocate, virtual resources you wanna allocate to each of those VMs. How many CPUs, how much RAM, and then how much storage you're gonna be allocating to those VMs. Calculate it all together, and that will give you a good indication of what physical specs your physical host should have, okay? What you'll find is in in the corporate space, in, in, in an enterprise, they're not going to be running desktops and laptops with ESXi hosting a whole bunch of production servers because it wouldn't be practical. They would still run, but they're gonna be running very, very poorly they're generally going to go and buy themselves a large enterprise, you know, server of some sort, one of the big vendor brands, and they're going to spec it out with a lot of CPU and a lot of RAM to be able to build a suitable amount of VMs on that particular host. So that is a little bit of a summary. So I haven't actually answered your question as to how many. You've got to make the decision yourself based on the resources that are available on your host. If your host is full, it doesn't have those resources, then you may need to add a second host or a third host into your environment. So you can build a lot more VMs than what your host can handle. And VMware will try to allocate the resources as much as you can, but you may have performance issues on those VMs because now you've got VMs fighting for those resources. The VMs are fighting for those, you know, those physical resources. So you may not get the best performance out of those VMs because you've over allocated, you've over provisioned those VMs to the actual physical amount of resources that are available on a VMware host. So that's the overview. Hopefully that gave you some understanding a little bit more around uh, how many VMs you can or shouldn't build on a host but hopefully it gave you some understanding and hopefully this has helped you out. If it did help you out, let me know in the comments. I'd really, really would like to know. As always, like and subscribe, clicking on that bell to be kept up to date with all of my video releases. Thanks so much for spending the time today watching this video. We'll see you next time.